Hey, welcome to another episode of Rock Fantasy Files tonight. It's a special edition. We're going to talk about uh, a band, one of my favorite bands. I didn't like them as much towards the end, of, uh, towards their last album, but I still find them very entertaining. We're talking about the band Ghost tonight. Uh, Swedish occult rock. I call it rock music. They are lumped in with the metal crowd, but I, I uh, you know, they tie in the occult with ongoing story storylines. They have great, great theatrical stage shows. My first time seeing them was in New York City at the Bowery Ballroom and they were mysterious and ominous and they had the amazing blood ceremony opening up. Oh, I awesome. you know, I great band. Early 70s hammer horror film. The, the vibe I got from that room. I've also caught them nor, num, numerous times since then. Been used through the area like Roseanne Ballroom. Uh, Chuck was talking about one earlier, which the term was the Terminal Five. We saw Terminal there. Five, yeah. I saw them uh, open up for Iron Maiden on the Book of Souls tour at Prudential, the Barclay Center, and finally I saw them at the Capitol Theater and Port Chester, and also the Palace Theater up in Albany, New York, on the latest tour, which was a couple of years ago. Now with the pandemic, it seems like we have been years since we saw a live show. Tonight, I've asked our guests to pick their two favorite songs from the four studio albums. And on the room tonight, we've got a lot of newcomers on the first time <laughs> for Rock Fantasy Files. We've got Lenny, Cinema Slaughter. He's got a podcast. We'll ask him about that later on. We got John Gaffney from The Lair of the Alchemist. He's joining us from down in Tampa, Florida. We got Chuck Salamone, who's a huge Ghost fan and also from Dissolve. I've got Rose, Kiki, and Ruby, who've been running my shop, Rock Fantasy, and keeping it alive. For me, yeah. I, I, my heart goes out to them. For, uh, for the <laughs> pandemic, they've been, they, they're have been my frontline workers for Rock Fantasy. And so I wanted to get an episode where, and we kind of agree, agreed on ghosts tonight. I've got Todd Duckleberger from Dissolve, and also you'll know him from the Mighty Prime Evil from back in the day in Middletown. We got Rich Cantino from the Metal Asylum, and we got the legendary Johnny Mop, a big heavy metal fan, the supporter of Rock Fantasy. So, uh, we're, how we're going to do this tonight, we're going to start off with uh, Prequel and Malara, and we'll have you guys pick your two songs from each, and we'll go around, and then as we come back around, we'll revisit the Infestium and the Opus Epiphanous, I, if I can <laughs> see so, I haven't even started drinking yet. I think it's time to start. So, yeah. Yeah. Average everybody and join in, and we're going to go with uh, Lenny. Lenny, welcome to the show, and... Thanks, you, man. Happy to be album? here. Uh, so, so what uh, what albums did you say you wanted to start with? We'll start with the newest. We're we're gonna go with 2018's uh, prequel <laughs> and uh, 2015's Malaria on the first round. Okay. Okay. Um, so you want us to talk about both songs right now, or you want to do a round robin and no, just do, do one uh, at a time? Do your, your, your your four songs, the two from each album in the first round. Yeah. Okay. So, so with a prequel, you know, I just gave this a listen again because the first real, I mean, the first two ghost albums I was really into. And like we just talked earlier, um, you know, I, I got turned on to these guys from you. I went into rock fantasy and uh, okay. I was like, hey, what's you know, what's new? And you're like, oh, you got to check these guys out. And this was like early 2010. So yeah. um I've been I got into that. And that first album was like, you know, um, Merciful Fate without King Diamond's um, signature falsetto. And mm -hmm. I was into it. I, I liked the evilness and, and, the, and the atmosphere. Um, so in prequel, um, Miasma is a, one of my favorite songs off that disc. I think Miasma is really cool. It's got this atmospheric okay. uh, bent. And also with on um, prequel, uh, and I'm going to butcher this, uh, it's Swedish. So Helvetus Funster. Okay. I think that's I think that's how you pronounce it. So uh, that also is just a, a song for me that I just always dig into. And uh, so for me, b both of I mean, they have, you know, their moments on each disc. But I think for me that those two uh, like reflect prequels uh, strengths uh, on that album. So th okay. that's my favorite. Um, Meliora, yep. Maj Majesty and Mummy Dust for me. OK, I. Uh, I just I don't know. I like the vibe on those. And I think if I'm thinking of these correctly, um, there's like this weird kind of calliope 
that plays at the beginning of one of these songs. And um, yeah, I don't know. I, I just dig the vibe. You know, it's it's creepy and off kilter. And with that, I like stuff like that. That's weird and and comes at you from an unexpected, uh, an unexpected place. So that those are my four picks. Excellent. Excellent. And we're going to move over to Mr. John Gaffney next. Uh, welcome to the show. Thanks. Happy to be here. Uh, I've been a Ghost fan since MySpace. I remember hearing them. They had a My yeah, they, wow. had a, they had a MySpace page, and that was the first time that I heard them. Was I, I can't remember if it was just a track that was getting passed around. So as soon as their first album came out, I was all over it. I've seen them on every the, the tour for every album that they've done since then. First time in Pennsylvania, I saw them at the, when I used to live in Pennsylvania at the uh, the Trocadero, and okay. then I saw them. I'm sorry, the Tower Theater, and then I saw them uh, three times since I've lived here in uh, in Florida. So from a prequel, uh, I picked Helvestus Fonster, which is Swedish and translates to Hell's Window. Okay. Uh, I always liked the '70s. It has a, r a real like. Uh, 70s horror movie vibe like a lot of those movies like Witchfinder general and stuff in the 70s yeah. the, the music that would play at through the end credits it would almost have like a kind of a light happy-ish sort of creepy yeah. sound to it and this really reminds me of that there's a flute that sort of plays the melody at the beginning uh, it picks up energy as it, as it sort of goes along. There's a real cool like 70s sounding synth line that jumps in there. It gets really dramatic. And then there's a tolling bell at the end. And I say this all yeah. the time on my channel. I am a sucker for three things. Tolling bells, classical, like clean acoustic style guitars and choirs. Whenever the, any of those in ingredients are in a song, it just makes it feel epic to epic. me. So. The Tolling Bell leads into my next favorite song from this album, uh, which is the last song on the record, Life Eternal. I love the gentle intro to it. I love the, uh, mm -hmm. the main line to the song. This is the moment of just letting go. I think that's a great line. The song builds really well. And there's all these cool, like towards the end of the song modulations where the chorus keeps like changing keys until they eventually get back to the, uh, the final verse. And it's in a completely different key than it was at the beginning of the song. So it just builds really well. The outro has this, these choirs, bells, choirs, and clean guitar. There's two of my things here. Uh, over this descending progression where they just keep repeating the line forever. So awesome. Love it. I love it. It's a great way to end the album. Excellent. All right, from uh, Meloria. Uh, the last time that I saw Ghost, I saw them at a place called the Dr. Phillips Center in Orlando. And wow. uh, that's an old like theater that has a really big like balcony level. And when they went into Square Hammer, it was the last song that they played in their set before their encore. I'm getting a shiver up my spine thinking about it because the crowd, when the chorus came in on that song, the crowd was so loud, you couldn't hear the band. Everybody was just, are you on the square? It was, uh, yeah. and I was in the balcony and everybody was just hanging over the balcony, getting into it. I loved it. It's a great song. That riff in the beginning is fantastic. It is just so catchy. Love it. My other pick uh, was, was also um, Mummy Dust. And I love, love the heavy, the heavy I chugging riff at the beginning. Really makes me think of Metallica. It sounds like an old school uh, Metallica riff at the beginning there. And I love the way it drops down in the chorus and he just does that, the mummy dust. <laughs> you know, it's so, yeah. <laughs> sort of creepy like that. It's just fantastic stuff. So those are my two picks from the, uh, the last two Ghost albums. Thank you very much, John. I think Solid. we're gonna we're gonna move over to the Rock Fantasy employee group. They're all together, and I think it's <laughs> cool. They're here. So, who would like to go first from the group? I, I can go first. Oh, I can go first. Yeah. Cool. Cool. Okay. So I uh, I was I was a little bit late to the party with being like a Ghost fan. I I Steve introduced me to the band. I don't remember if it was like when their latest album came out or the one before i'm not sure if i worked I for you think, yet uh, it was definitely the one before i think okay. it was and uh you did go see them with me 
I oh, did at Capitol Hill. Yeah. The pre and that was such tour great at the Cap time. Center, yeah. Yeah, talk about a great energy and very theatrical, like you were saying. But um, for uh, for prequel, I picked for my first one was Dance Macabre. I love that song. I think it's got like such a, like an 80s glam rock or glam metal vibe. Um, like the first time I heard it, I was like, I feel like this could be a Scorpion song. And I love that. <laughs> it's so great. Great video. Yes. Yeah. Video. And for my second one, I chose Rats, just because I think it's a, it's a great it's a song. It's a good sing-along. It's exactly what I was going to say. There's, um, rat, there's cool. a rat. She rats. had rats, and look, she got up. Rats. She <laughs> <laughs> said there's rats. <laughs> and for um, Meloria, I, I chose, I also chose Square Hammer, because that's like one of my go-to hype songs. It just gets me the energy is great and I chose um Cersei I think that's like one of the first songs that really like, got me into the band I remember I stumbled across the music video on YouTube and I was like damn I can get into this so it, it made me want to kind of like get into them a little bit more but yeah those are mine excellent I guess we'll okay. oh, 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 look for Kiki since she's in the middle let's hello look. you're the center square in the middle of the center <laughs> square for me uh oh <laughs> Um, oh, Ruby, Ruby got me into ghosts a couple of years ago and I looked them up and the, um, as an ex-Catholic, the aesthetic is, oh my gosh, yes, the Catholicism oh. <laughs> is so great, so uh, yes. the, the reversal, uh -huh. um, so mm. on prequel, um, I also really like rats, like Ruby said, or, yeah, I don't know, it's a good, like, high energy fun mm -hmm. overall like rock song mm -hmm. like sing along come along dance along i know that's corny but whatever comes on in the store and i'm dusting i start dusting way faster <laughs> into it mm -hmm. um yeah i gotta get really into it and um um oh and which image oh that was like actually is extra almost picked that one yeah i think one of my or maybe my overall favorite ghost song i really love the lyrics on that mm -hmm. song and the literary references and the biblical references it pa paints like a great mental image of like the on the pale white horse like yeah. the four yes. horsemen of the apocalypse yeah. and the reference to like the hieronymus bosch painting like the, the garden of earthly delights yeah um yeah great imagery i really love that song um nice. it's a great that's a great song yeah Yep. And then on uh, Meliora, or Malori, I don't know how to pronounce it. Um, yeah, sorry, yeah. I have to take a lot of notes because I can't <laughs> remember oh, too. anything <laughs> ever. Um, I really love um, He Is. Oh, and so it's like a really beautiful, soothing mm -hmm. song. I almost feel like you could play it on a Christian radio station yeah. and if nobody was listening to the lyrics. You get away you with it. You would get away with it. <laughs> Just sneak it. The shining of the light. Yeah, that's true. I cannot see. Yeah. He yeah. Is. Um, oh, and I really like for the pit from the pinnacle to the pit. Oh, oh yeah. Because the yeah. I really like how the, yeah. the music like ties in with the lyrical theme. Like the, the oh, guitar yeah. riff goes up and then comes down from the pinnacle. Yeah. To the pinnacle. Yeah. I don't know. That's just a banger. I don't really have anything else to say about that. <laughs> I mean, this is my turn, right? Yeah. Um, we have we have very massive overlap for sure. Oh, I'm yeah. the definitely the newest person to ghost uh in the room for sure. I had okay. like I knew about them and had like heard some songs randomly here and there and then um but didn't know that much about them. Happy that I do know more about them now because I basically studied for them. Yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, so for prequel, um, I also chose Dance Macabre. Um, I just liked how I, I have like really similar notes to yours. That like, was probably like that's fun. Five ghost yeah, songs. it's a great song. It's very fun. It's like dancey. It and has it that 80s vibe. Yeah. yeah. Um, and you know, I like when songs are like like I like when you can dance to something and it surprises you. You're listening to an mm -hmm. album and maybe not all of it is mm -hmm. that mood, and then there's one song that's like, I could dance to this. Right. And that, I like that sort of like yeah, wild card song. That's a good phrase. Yeah, so that's that was my pick, and my other pick was also rats. <laughs> okay. I really like the I really like the solo riff in that song. I feel like it's really it's short, but it's good. <laughs> and um, 
and you know there's lots of like timely references mm. to the plague right yeah. <laughs> and corruption yeah um yeah. that's really nice and then uh for Meliora or you know however you say that uh I also chose from the pinnacle of the pit because that bass is that bass. amazing in that bass. song it's like yeah that's uh, I love a song that has really great really really leans on the bass which I know some other picks from other albums I also noted that on because they tend to do a lot of like really great bass licks but that was really what and then there's like the guitar in that song is also very sort of light and the like there's like these like higher runs that are a huge contrast with that bass line and it it works well I just love it and then my last pick was also Cersei, which, um, or Cersei, whatever. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and it's just, I like it. It's like moody, mm-hmm. romantic. And the music video is cute too. I haven't I like seen it. the music video. I should have looked it up. Um, but I like it. It's just got this like soft sort of like more romantic mm-hmm. kind of vibe to it. It feels very like, Vibe. Vibe. It's vibe. vibe. It's yeah, like, you know. <laughs> yeah. It's a very chill song. It's very nice. So those are my picks. Awesome. Sorry, my phone was like wigging out out of nowhere. So very unprofessional I am tonight. <laughs> the, la- the last time I saw them live, they opened up the show with rats and they had like some intro music. And when that drum beat kicked in, the curtain opened yeah. up and that was yeah. another song where when that chorus came up just, everybody was just crazy right along with them and it was yeah. really really cool excellent well thank you gir- girls for your opinions and we'll be back for the next two albums in a little bit with you and uh, we're gonna head over to mr chuck Salomon next Hi. To show tonight thank you thanks for having me on <clears throat> um well, I mean, you know that I'm a big Ghost fan, and yeah, I do. I have, I have been since the beginning. And what really, like, kind of did it for me was that Ghost, with their whole, you know, act and show and everything, they really like brought me back to like when I was a kid with Kiss. You know, it really had that kind of feel to me. You know, like something mysterious, something more than just yes. a couple of guys standing on stage in jeans playing riffs and whatnot, you know, like and uh I mean even though like with all the lawsuit crap and everything like that, Papa, it <laughs> diminished it a little bit, but you know, I'm still, you know, I'm still into them. So <laughs> Cool he's got figure. all he's got all the ghost action figures. I know. You're gonna make me go get my toys. I didn't bring any of my ghost stuff down. I'm in a different room, but I'm not gonna start <laughs> bringing second, everything down. You might have to go get there one. We go, there we go talking about toys again. <laughs> <laughs> Regular action figure toys. We're keeping a PG. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Of course. Okay. So okay. That's what okay. I'm saying. So I'll 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 go now with uh prequel. My two favorite songs, and I mean, this is actually, this wound up being a lot harder than I thought it was going to be because I, I really don't dislike any ghost song. So to like figure out which ones are technically my favorite and, mm-hmm. you know, which ones I want to talk about was difficult because, so from prequel, I'll say Faith because that's definitely, you mm-hmm. know, like the harder hitting one on the album you know definitely more reminiscent of their older stuff but at the same time they do like that stupidy shred solo like like after the first chorus and i hate it like i really don't like it it just it always felt so out of place to me like in that song and when that song first came out and you know these days everything is recorded and everything is online when they recorded that like it was like the first or second time they played it live and the guitar player murdered that solo and it, <laughs> so now every time I hear it I always just hear like it stops playing and it's just I mean but I do like love the song I wish that that solo piece was out and they just jammed on that riff because it's got such a great groove but I still will say that it's one of my favorites on prequel and my other pick for prequel would be Which Image because that song is just really different. Yeah. It's got like a almost like an 80s new wave feel. The lyrics in that song are great. And the way that like 
oh, I don't know. It just, it rocks. It's just, it's a great scene. Those are my two from prequel. So now I'll go to Melora, or however you want to say it. It's one thing about Ghost, they have almost unpronounceable uh, yeah. <laughs> album titles. Um, <laughs> I'm gonna I'm gonna say Spirit because that's a great opener and it's fast and it's all that's yeah. a pretty energy song for them, you know. Like, and I mean, like I, I know you guys were saying um, Square Hammer, but Square Hammer kind of falls in between Melora and Prequel because they did wind up like bundling it onto Thank the Melora album as like. Yeah, I- is that, I knew is it, that the extended I, ones? Steve? I was getting confused because it's not on my Melora yeah. album. Everybody kept saying it. And I'm like, that's it, not no, it, it was on Pope yeah, Star. It was on the EP. Yeah, and then, yeah, 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 then they updated it later. Yeah. Right. They updated it. Yeah. Because, on that like, I got right, right. And that song, they won, that's the song they won a Grammy for. And that's like, you know, like they're probably <laughs> their most popular song, you know? Yeah. Right. But any, anyway, so it's, Spirit and then Majesty. Like, dude, Majesty, that song rocks. It's like so like classic rock, deep purpley kind of. It's, it's awesome. And also, I'm a huge King Kong fan, and that's like the Papa Kong shirt. If you guys have ever seen yeah. that design, yeah, yeah, with, yeah it's cool. with that's Papa so cool. King Kong it's... on the on the Empire State. I love that shirt so much that i bought it in white and i hate white shirts just because they don't <laughs> offer it in black you know yeah, it's a great so I, I remember that so so i i wear it i wear it to bed because i won't wear it out of the house but <laughs> okay those are my those are my those are my two picks for those albums so nice i, I almost brought my ghost shirt on i almost i forgot i was gonna put it on i have the one where uh the pope is kneeling down in front of papa Oh yeah. yeah, yeah, that was the that was the that was the one for uh, that they put out when they were trying to pick the new pope, right? Yeah, it was actually if you remember, it was at the uh, Terminal Five show, and they had played or tried to play in Philly, the, in, in I Philadelphia. Don't know if they right. could play because the pope was there or something. I think that's why they did the shirt. But, uh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, next in line on my list here is Todd. Welcome. Awesome. Great to be here. Uh, Thank you for coming. Yeah, no, I, I mean, this is a, a pretty uh, broad discussion. Uh, and I, I think that really you can't talk about Ghost without admiring their marketing. And mm-hmm. uh, yeah. absolutely. Starting with Prequel, um, I saw, you know, we were bringing, breaking out album covers before, but this is the, uh, you know, the 3D variant. Oh, cool. came out. So okay. I went yeah, like probably. crazy finding that the, you know, <laughs> the horseman uh, was in different spots. And I'm like, oh, no, you know, maybe I have to get one copy of everything. <laughs> yeah. It's four. Like, uh, four copies. I think I have four. six now. You know, it's just crazy. But, now uh, you sound like Chris Allo from, from, the, from uh, the channel and from the squares. He collects five of everything. Yeah. <laughs> You know, and I can see that, and especially when there's different colors of the vinyl, and you know, Fye has their version, Best Buy has their version. Um, you know, then there's the uh, yeah. independent record store version. It was like a hey, clear Ryan. bottle, right? So I think that's you know very kiss of them. They've uh, yeah. kind of carried that into yeah. <laughs> definitely <laughs> the figures and everything. I even I saw that Knuckle Bones has out two new figures in case yes. you, know, you have enough. Yep. Ghost- already um i almost bit the bullet on that one but um prequels uh probably the lightest album i would say in definitely oh yeah you know um i actually enjoyed since we were talking about eps uh, just the logo you know which became their opener the last time uh, chuck and i went to go see them you know uh which was really was right before the pandemic hit. We yeah. got to enjoy a ghost show, which was awesome. I'm glad we went. It was like a Tuesday night, you know. But, yeah. who, did they, who did they tour with the, the most recent album? Because I missed them for that tour. I saw them for Melly Orr with Melly Orr like, was with Iron Maiden, right? Um well nothing nothing more or nothing yeah, something I remember they, that. Yes. 
Oh, know. they were. That's right. They were headlining themselves, right? Yeah, they were headlining, yeah, and they right. also did the Iron Maiden uh, opening slot. All right, yeah, 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 yeah. And that was cool. So that's their kind of their segue into the big arena thing. You know, like when they went out with Metallica, that kind of mm -hmm. exposed them to all these giant crowds. You know, and then they started doing the big. Now the second tier of the arena was closed, but still there was a lot of people there for a Tuesday night. Yeah. Where did you see that? At the Barclay Center, Todd? Um, yeah, I did. I was at that show as well. But then okay. uh, in February, they came back around, right? Was that when it was, Chuck? Was it when no, it was, I, I wrote it down. October 21st, 2019 at the DCU Center in Massachusetts, in Worcester. Oh, okay. Yep, yep. I know where that is. Right by the, yeah. Yeah. That's by the Palladium there. Yep, yep, yep. Yeah, yeah. You could see the Palladium from there. And... On that tour, they didn't even have a head, uh, an opening act, did they? No, they did. They, oh, did. they did. It was some. Oh, okay. It was some band. It was a band like they were called like Nothing Something. Oh, okay. They nothing were more. Nothing more. They're a hard nothing, rock band. Nothing more. Yeah, they were. Okay. They, they were a big, uh, hard rock tour for them. I don't yeah. know. I was out getting a beer when that was happening. So yeah, yeah. sure. <laughs> <laughs> well, that was the joke that Nothing More fans were getting exposed to satanic rock and roll. That was the big. <laughs> All right, so I guess you know I'm I'm lumping in Kiss the Go Goat with Prequel, so okay. uh, that's that's one. Uh, so, and then the other one, uh, which you know I was happy to hear that others liked as well, was the Helvetus Monster. Uh, I thought that okay. just just the deepest and and most interesting. Like that that hit me right away when I yeah, heard yeah. Prequel. Definitely, right, you know. Um, so so that's that. Then with Meliora. Uh, I had the uh, privilege of meeting Papa and two of the ghouls uh, oh. down at the parade when they did the Unholy Unplugged. Oh. So I uh, don't know if anybody else was there, but I actually got to film it. It's on my channel, the Evil Eye uh, video channel on uh, YouTube. So you can check that oh, out. Oh, definitely, cool. definitely. Um, but I waited in this line that was like, you know, a million people long and uh, got to, you know, at least shake hands with Papa. And um, I realized he wasn't as tall as he looks on stage. <laughs> Without yeah. that. Yeah. I looked down on him a little bit, but uh, that didn't change my opinion of him. I was like, you know, hey man, great songwriting. I, I really love, you know, the riffs gets me going. Yeah. But anyway, this is- Yours are always secretly short. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, I had him sign or, Papa signed, but the ghouls actually had a stamp that they just oh, got. Wow. Oh, yeah. I love that. That's, oh, yeah. oh, that's, that's cool. cool. Like similar to the signing I have. It's uh, Yeah. Make yeah, let's your signatures. Make sure it wasn't Papa. Oh, that comes tagged? So, what's that? <clears throat> His, I didn't, I didn't realize Steve's box set has autographs on it too. Oh yeah, we got, I got the box set at the Terminal 5 show. And uh, in fact, uh, I'll tell you a little story. I don't want to interrupt you, Todd, in the middle, but uh, it's okay. I ran into, I was at a bar. I can't think of the name of it now. It's the one we always hit before we'd go to stage 48 or Terminal 5. Uh, I can't think of the name of it. But anyhow, we were all in there, and, you know, it's a metal crowd. Everybody's going in for the pregame and having a burger or, you know, it's a beer or whatever, getting ready for the show. And this little short guy comes walking up, and he walks by <laughs> us, and he looks at us with this look. And we both had this weird feeling. And it was like, then later on that night was the first time on that tour where he kind of came out of the pontiff outfit. And I, I affectionately call the teen wolf gimmick. <laughs> and I'm not putting him down by doing that, but he changed, you know, he came out when he took that off and he came out with that new persona. And then we, my friend that I had dinner with looked at each other and it's like, that was him. That was him. He was in that restaurant. No one even knew who he was. You know, he stopped in and I... <laughs> Uh, had a, a, a little dinner before the show or whatever and the way he looked at us you could just tell it was something weird and then we're like that's him that's him now we know who the guy really is it took away it was almost like when you met when you when kiss took the makeup off so if you want to relate it to the five minutes theatrical thing oh, hey steve when when you were eating was it dukes that you were at no, was, Dukes was down in the village more. That was more like for the Gramercy or Irving Plaza. This yeah, was yeah, because they had two locations. More. The reason I remember the bar was there, and you may have been there, they had some blacklight posters on the wall. If you kind of know, I, I love blacklight posters, and I love that. You do? Got a black no, we don't say. 
got him up. Zach was, he's got a nice, uh, cool room at his house, too. You can see. So, all right, totally Todd, ripped Steve off. Todd, you can yeah. finish. Now. I'm sorry. I, I jump in and. Yeah, no, it's a, that's a cool story. Uh, and yeah. I think that, uh, you know, Tobias, we all know he's, you know, Tobias Ford, who are yes. Ford, however you say his name. Um, yeah. You know, he, he uh, kind of relented to the pressure, I think. You know, it's very hard to stay undercover like that for a long mm. time. Yeah. Um, you know, obviously some people know who you are. And then if they talk to somebody, you need a lot of people to be quiet in order to mm. keep going for. Sure. Sure. You know, like that whole lawsuit thing came with the uh, Martin mm -hmm. and the other guys, and his cover was kind of blown. So I guess he figured out. Ah, <laughs> yeah. with it. Okay. Um, but as far as Meliora goes, uh, you know, from pin Pinnacle to the Pit is just great. I mean, I, I love that bass riff. You know, um, I I like I always love it. Um, you know, like in our truck in our my band uh, dissolve when we have like a ripping bass line like that where things just get quiet and the bass carries it along. Um, you know, and it's a good just a good stomper. It's a good like kind of mid tempo chugger that just you know you can kind of bang your head to as it's going on. Yeah, yeah. It's a lot of fun. You know, it's a lot of fun. Um, and then um, either. I really like Devil Church, man. I like Devil so Church. I. I like these these oddball instrumentals they throw in, you know. Uh, yeah. So, so yeah. I mean, that's that's it for me. Uh, I don't know. I, I love all the songs. Just you know, I love <laughs> other people have said. Excellent, excellent. Next on the list, I'm, not, I'm making you guys wait forever down the bottom row here. Rich <laughs> from Brave Words and uh, Metal Asylum. Welcome to the show, Rich. I'm glad you could join us tonight. Thanks for having me. All right, so uh, my two from the most recent album, I did, I, I mean, I like the most recent album, but I'm not the biggest fan of it, like when I first heard it. I thought it was yeah. a little too, maybe a little too light, a little too melodic, I thought. And I, I love melody in my metal, but I just thought it was a little, just too light compared to Meliora, which I really yeah. love. That's my, that's my favorite album by them. Okay. Um, but the two songs I would pick from it would be Rats and probably Faith. Because they have a little more, I think, edge. Okay. To them. And the instrumentals are cool too. I like them also. But um, yeah, I would pick those two just because they had a little more. There's a little more metal to those, I think. Mm -hmm. Um, and then Meliora, which is my favorite. Still, I like the debut a lot too. But I really like Meliora. This is, I don't think there's a bad song on it. No. Um, I picked. I went with, uh, I don't know how you say, is it Circe? Circe? Yes. Circe? 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 Yeah. Uh, okay. We're all wrong. <laughs> so, I went with that one. I love the riff. I think this album is very kind of influenced. I, I always thought they were kind of Merciful Fate-ish. Mm -hmm. Like, like the Melissa album, because they have the catchiness of like some of the songs on Melissa. Um, with the riffs too, but they also remind me of Candlemass at times. Oh. That's what I really like. <clears throat> Tobias, you know, kind of do, you, you kind of, Candlemass kind of, fan. Yeah. yeah. I think, didn't he originally tap um, yes. Messiah to be, be the, the vocalist? Singer. Yeah, he yeah. wanted Messiah oh, to be really? the singer, oh, wow. which oh. would have been an, an incredible yeah. version of this band. Yeah. Um, but sorry to interrupt you, but yeah, that would have oh, been I, awesome. What is? I didn't know that. But they, this album kind of reminds me a little bit of Candlemass because it's kind of doomy, but it's, you know, it's more up tempo and that's what Candlemass is like. They're not mm -hmm. too slow. I mean, they have their moments of being slower, but the, you know, the songs have a nice um, pace to them and the riffs are very catchy. And that's what this album also reminds me of. So uh, Seriously is one of those songs and I have to go with Mommy Dust also. I really like to drive okay. that song. It's nice and, you know, heavy, but it's still melodic. The whole album is like that. You know, it's got a, a, that metal edge and the metal riffs, but it's so catchy and so melodic. And that's what is so appealing about Ghost. You know, aside from the theatrics and the show, mm -hmm. and the costume, you know, the costume that uh, Papa wears and changes it every album. I don't know. Is he changing it again for the new album, I guess? I think, yeah, I think he's, the, he's, pon the, pop the pontiff is coming back, correct? Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. So which, which, makeup, which makeup was that? Because I really like the skull face and I thought, when he changed yeah, it, it's going back I to the, 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 the makeup got real lazy, I thought, when he changed it. 
Yeah. So I, I really like the skull one. So is that what he's going back to? He's coming back to this kind of look again. Yeah. Oh yeah. Okay. That's, that's the yeah, one I like yeah. too. A little more, yeah, a little more work involved in that. If you, watch, if you watch all their videos, it tells a story and they just released a video and look within the last week and some of you guys have probably seen it, but, uh, okay. where it's kind of being turned back into that. Cool. Uh, and, and, and a lot of people, all and it, I, this is this band could be almost like a pro wrestling gimmick at times, <laughs> in the way and some people per perceive it because there's a lot of people out there that think that's a, a new singer on each album. <laughs> I still run across that. But and like, you oh, never know who's in the and you never know who's the, the new band. singer. <laughs> and the album, and I'm like, oh, there's a toy. And the band members are yeah. the name was cool. So you don't know who's though. Yeah. Yeah. The like, Hey, Rich, you make a really good point because I heard that Dave Grohl played with them as well. Yes, I was going to say that. I heard he was also yeah, like, at some point. He's on one yeah, of the so like, as Yeah, in. and so I, I like that idea that, you know, there's people in the band. You don't know who these people are, and I, no, I no, dig yeah. that. I think it would be great if, like, you know, once their lineup is all these rock stars that we know and you don't even know that they're in the costume. Yeah, yeah that's you find out, you, know, you find out later after the tour or something to be very cool. I know yeah. that uh, one of the guys from Catatonia was playing in, in Ghosts for a while. I'm not sure if he still is. But... Okay. This is what Papa looks like now. That's the Papa now. So he's that, yeah, that's he, the new he's one. Back with the pont. So it's a little <laughs> bit kind of like yeah, I mean, it's, it's all tied into the bit. Catholic Church, like uh, like how like how the Kiki was talking like about before. It's all talk, you know. All right, Rich. Uh, Thanks for your input, and we'll be back Thanks. for your final four picks. And uh, Johnny, welcome to the show. Sorry we made you wait to go very last. You're the last in line tonight, even though it's oh, not, yeah. we're not talking about yeah. you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you very much for having me. Uh, yeah, diehard Ghost fan. I started doing my homework, and I realized I guess I was sleeping a little bit on the last album. I, uh, I Once it first came out, I gave it a spin, and it started – making ghosts more of a guilty pleasure type of a band and okay. uh, I, was, I was digging it really as i was doing my homework again and uh obviously the songs were ringing a bell again faith faith is actually one of my picks actually i love the yeah. organic feel of that song you know that's a great song and um see the light was another one too as well that i remember hearing when the album okay. first came out as well too and um yeah, just once again, uh, and I love I love the band very much, and it just seemed like as they progressed, I started sleeping on them. But the third album was one that I was really into. He is was one yeah. of the picks from that as well, as well as Mummy Dust because that was one of the heavier ones as well. Yeah. You know, that, that heavy Dust. drum riff, very driving track, and it was going to be an honorable mention for uh, Square Hammer, which I was getting confused. I wasn't sure if that was from the third album as everybody was putting that on there. It wasn't on my third album. But yeah, as I guess it was an EP. But yeah, those are my big four. He is Mummy Dust, Faith, and uh, See the Light from the from the fourth album. But yeah, That's once again, cool. the fourth album. As I was going back, I'm gonna start playing it a little bit more. I realized that I didn't give it a lot of spins the first go round, and uh, can't yeah. wait till the pandemic's over and get back to a ghost show. Started taking it for granted. You realize as you've been cooped up for the past year. Right now, I'd go see a guy play banjo on a corner right now. <laughs> yeah, I hear you. I couldn't agree more, man. Holy shit. <laughs> but yeah, Ghost, uh, Ghost Live, too. You know, I got to give him credit. Yeah, yeah. Live show. Everybody talks about how those songs make you dance. Nothing like, you know, being on a live show and everybody dancing and moving. That's half the energy right there, you know. And sure, Ghost, sure, Ghost sure. will do that, you know. I didn't get to see those new songs. So seeing Rats, I'm excited to see Rats when I finally do, do get back to a oh, Okay. Show. You know, that's one of those driving tracks as well. So, but okay. yeah, looking forward to get back to the ghost show. Excellent. So I guess I'll do my picks and then we'll move back and go around the, for our closing statements tonight. Uh, 2018 <laughs> with the prequel album, I found them going much lighter and poppier and the stage imagery be turned more campy. The first album, of course, as we all talked about earlier, ominous, kind of like threatening where then it kind of turned into like, oh, there are, you know, satanic buddies, but they're very slapstick. <laughs> and you have like, there's a girl playing a tambourine, a ghoul has a tambourine up on the top. And it was just a little bit different. And, you know, he's coming out riding a tricycle at times and things <laughs> like that. Like, you know, total campy 
uh, affectionately, uh, we were referring to him and Chris Allo, who was a regular and couldn't make it tonight. Uh, we were saying it's kind of like Father uh, Sarducci from Saturday Night Live a little bit. <laughs> just because it was like the priest and he was, you know, he's always telling all these campy jokes and everything else. So, uh, but I will go with Faith. From that, from that album, I think that's one of the stronger songs. I, I know other people were going to pick Rats because it was a single. And I really like Witch Image. I think Kiki also men mentioned that one tonight and soon someone else did. And from uh, Meloria, uh, I'm going to go with three songs and I'm going to cheat. But Devil Church and how it goes right into Absolution. I think mm -hmm. that you can't take one without the other because it's kind of like the intro mm -hmm. into that song. And I Absolution is just the one where you just sing along yeah. and everything else with. And uh, the other song from that would be, to me, would be From the Pinnacle. I'm also saying that's really not a bad song on that album. So yeah. you know, it's a great Ghost, song. Ghost does that a lot, where you have the one-two punch with the songs. Yeah. You know, from the one right to the other. You got to have the one with the other. And I mean, I listen to my, my music pretty much as an album, unless I do have it on a shuffle, like if I'm at Rock Fantasy and we have the I. We have iPods where we have shuffle and then we do listen to songs. But usually when I listen to a, a record, I listen to it in full. So it's hard for me to pull from an intro and go out and, and pull it away. And I find that with any kind of music. But anyhow, back to Lenny for your final four picks, man. All, the right, all right, all right, all right, all right. So, all right. um, oh, man, it was it was tough because in Festishuman, I think that's <laughs> Um, I don't know if I'm butchering it. I'm positive. We might all um, be. Yeah, <laughs> but there's a couple of songs. I mean, I love this disc. This is a, a really strong album. I was totally into it, but there's um, there's so many evil lyrics, and it was tough to pick which one that I liked the best. But Year Zero is probably one of my favorite songs. I mean, I just love the intro <laughs> with like. The vocals, you know, summoning, you know, the names of, of the devil and going through all of these demonic yeah. names. <laughs> exactly, exactly. And then, you, and then you got this. <laughs> it, 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 there, there's something there really singer. sinister about it, you know. Um, and then after that, it's like he's something telling you, you about. Movie, yeah. yeah, I mean, but he's telling you that the fate of mankind is, is the fate of lice. Um, and just telling you, like, you know, you're next to nothing. And, uh, and you know, the, you know, Satan is, is everything and, and humanity is, is dust. And I just like that evil bent and it's, and the way it's delivered. I mean, there's, you know, there's tons of um, black metal bands that sound really fucking evil, excuse me, they sound really evil. But when he's delivering it, it's, he's got this, this low key delivery that makes it even more evil <laughs> you know that it that it's he couldn't be you, like if you were like oculus you know the band the black metal band oculus um yeah. they have this really nightmarish quality to them and what i liked about papa's delivery is that it it just it, it's a counterpoint to these evil lyrics so year zero is 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 such a great song and then i screwed up earlier and said one of the other songs that I liked had this calliope at the beginning of it. And that's actually Secular Haze, which is the yeah. other song that I really like. I just like the, again, that vibe is just like this crazy off kilter, you know, calliope. Like you're, you're, it should be happy you're at this, you know, carnival or whatever, but you realize <laughs> uh, you're ready to it steal like your soul. A feel. Yeah. So it's, it's really, I, those two songs, I mean, obviously it was, it was really tough because this, 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 the songwriting is so perfect on it. Um, but yeah, so those are my two picks for that. Um, Opus Eponymous. Yeah, man. So what do you say about this album? One of the, I mean, there's really very few right. perfect, perfect records that you'll get and they'll like, turn you on to a band that's almost creating a new genre for themselves so like you said like merciful fate you have doom bands um when they have all these different qualities to them but they're they own their own music you know what i mean it's like it's truly ghost even though it's got all of these other things going on um and i'm a huge fan of horror 
and I love the beginning of um, the album cover because it's Salem's Lot, you know, and it's yeah, and it's like, yeah. you know, and it's the yep. uh, the vampire from Salem's Lot with his arms spread over the town. Well, you know, he's got his arms spread over, you know, it's almost like um, uh, the what is it? The that church reminds me kind of like the the church on the album cover Mayhem's, you know, album mm-hmm. cover, you know, yes. so it's. Yes. It's got that vibe to it, too. So they're channeling in this, you know, horror and they're channeling in this black metal vibe. But, you know, they have all of these other qualities to them. Uh, mm-hmm. And I know I'm going on and on anyway. So That's Satan, fine. Satan prayer. I just want to invoke the devil. I <laughs> want, you know, I want to sell my soul to Satan when I hear this. I mean, you know, it uh, and conclavi con Dio is just another song that I just find it so interesting. I I mean, this it's tough to pick your favorite tracks on this disc yeah, because yeah. it's They're like one great. after another, they dovetail, you know, even the instrumentals, you they're just so catchy, you can't get enough of them, you know? Um, yes. Anyway, the, the first two, two discs um, I was really into. Um, and just to, uh, just to say something, uh, Dance Macabre, I know it's not in here, but it's an EP. Uh, Carpenter Brute is really a great synth wave band. And I don't know if you guys have like been turned on to these guys, but Carpenter yeah, Brute yeah, did yeah. the remix of Dance Macabre and it's really super cool. So that's just another one I wanted to throw in there because uh, yeah, I'm cheating like Steve, but uh, that's cheat, it. Man, you can cheat, you can cheat. Yeah. Yeah. You feel that one yet? Yeah. I'm gonna even- Oh, oh that's, that's awesome. Cool. So, yeah, that's that's cool, man. <laughs> I'll cheat. I'm gonna cheat and say that I really like their ABBA cover off of the. Uh, oh yeah, I think that's the, the one that Dave Grohl plays on. Marionette. Yeah, that ABBA cover is awesome. I'm a marionette. It's yeah. fucking yeah. great. Yeah, I mean, yeah, it's I great. Mean, and then, I mean, the ABBA song's great too, but I mean, I, I love ABBA's version also. Yeah, Keely likes ABBA. Shoot me. <laughs> <laughs> I can't fault you there. I like it too. It's catchy, man. You you can't deny great right. songwriting. Yeah, can't deny good. Does Keeler like Mama Mia? Yeah, that's the question. Does Keeler watch Mama, Mama Mia? Mia? Yeah, I bet he's going to do a mean uh, cover of Mama Mia. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> App is an earworm. They work their way in and they just, yeah. they just never leave. <laughs> Ever. That's the thing. And like when you you know you hear that song, and like people are saying when that came out, it's like that's an ABBA song. So then immediately. You know, I reached not immediately, but maybe you know, a day or two later. I said, "Well, let me look up the video that I have did," and they're like walking around oh, yeah. in the marionette, and it was just so cool. But, Definitely. Uh, anyhow, from Ava to John Gaffney, here we yeah. are tonight. Back to we're back to sunny Florida. That's <laughs> right. You go. Uh, Infestissimum. I'm a marionette. We were just uh, you guys were just talking about it. Love it. Love the main rhythm. Uh, Tobias, his deadpan delivery just sort of adds to sort of the the creepiness of the whole thing. I love the way in the chorus it, I'm a marionette, da, 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 and then it drops down, I'm a marionette, dad. It's like, it's almost like it's yes. slowing down, the hanging ominous chords in the chorus. Uh, I also picked from this one, Year Zero, for all the reasons that were uh, just mentioned, uh, the yeah. choir intro. I love the uh, main guitar riff, uh, that line. I also love that line, the fate of man is that of lice. So, love that, man. Yeah, just a, just a great, great song. So, All right, the uh, first album, Opus Eponymous. Uh, like I mentioned, I, I had was bought this like the day it came out. And so I was turning all my friends onto this and I would take them out to my car and just play. <laughs> and that when that first track comes in, which is my first pick here, Conclave Con Dio, uh, that bass at the beginning. At that time, uh, this whole like kind of retro 70s sound was kind of unique. So the bass mm-hmm. has a real kind of old 70s Ampeg amp sound. The guitars aren't super saturated. They're, they're more like a set, has a real 70s vibe to it. At that time, that was uh, really unique. And uh, Papa's voice and everything, it was just the whole, the whole thing, the album cover, just everything about it just really jumped out at you. And that song is, is uh, just great. The main riff is fantastic. Uh, the middle section I love when it goes like deca do gaka do gaka do gaka do gaka gets yeah. like super tight and it's doing you know, like the drums are playing around. It's fantastic. My other pick from this one is Elizabeth, or as they pronounce it, mm. Elizabeth. 
a great melodic chorus. It's got a really cool uh, main riff to it. There's some really neat kind of organ lines that, yes. that come in and out that again gives it that real 70s uh, horror vibe to it. Uh, I love his falsetto vocal thing, Elizabeth, the way he goes up I'm and just, <laughs> all yeah, right, it's very sort of King say, Diamond, yeah. but way oh. subdued, you know, more sort yeah. of subdued uh, King Diamond. Absolutely. And this is Bathroom. another one where the uh, last chorus of the song modulates and changes key. And it's just a really cool kind of clever yeah. songwriting thing. So just a fantastic album and just an amazing uh, debut album. And uh, I think Chuck, you mentioned it earlier there. Uh, it's very hard in this day and age of the internet and social media to generate any kind of mystery or, yeah. or uh, hype around something. And they really had that uh early on like nobody knew who they were they just popped up out of nowhere it wasn't like they were slugging it out in the clubs for a couple years they really mm. just just came out of nowhere and it was uh it was really cool because it brought me back to to sort of the the mystery right. and aura that used to surround bands in the 70s mm -hmm. and the definitely 80s. that was all there was big mystery when i came out. i remember when they the first gig they played in new york city i couldn't attend but they played in the basement Webster Hall, right? Yeah, the Bowery Ball. Wasn't it the Bowery Ball room? Oh, the Bowery. I saw that. I saw that with Blood Ceremony, but they actually played in the Marlin. The, the room, Webster. I think, at Webster. Like, like yeah, that uh, was like when, when they came over for Maryland Death Fest, which I think Maryland, was like yeah, their was first. Maryland Death Fest, and like, then they. Or something. Yeah, yeah. We yeah. saw yeah. them on the 13 Dates of Doom, uh, 13 Dates of Doom, it was called, the tour that we saw. Steve. Right. Was this, that was their second time. That Coming was at Webster the with, with Blood Ceremony. Yeah, yeah, yeah it was yep, yep. freaking didn't, awesome. Didn't they play with Opeth? And I think they um, was it Astronaut. Jess and the Jess and the Ancient Ones. Uh, I saw them with Opeth with Chuck. That was at Rose. Right? Yeah, but they yeah, played yeah. again. Yeah. I think they played I again in the with, city. I I've forget never who seen it was. Jess and the Ancient Ones. The Jess and the Ancient Ones are an awesome band. I love I love them. them. Yeah, they I've were seen, awesome. They must have been with them too. Yeah, Jess, Jess opened up for King Diamond on the yeah. Abigail uh, Revisited tour, and that's the year I got hit by a car, so I remember my friends going, and I said, get me a Jess shirt, and they did, and I obviously, I wasn't able to go. I had a broken arm yeah. and a broken leg. So. They're, I love that band, too. They're, they're yeah, great. You should do a show on them. And Ghost was kind of the band that, that kicked off that whole retro yeah. 70s guys using guitar tones very you know yeah. like you said just in the ancient ones blood ceremony there were just a, whole, a, a lot of bands wow. came after that then and were doing that that very old school retro yeah. um, witchcraft is that one of them also witchcraft is another one yeah they're the right very right. pentagram like no, that was all I wanted to listen to when that first album came out with that style of music one after yeah. another yeah what else sounds like that what else sounds like that Black Sabbath yeah, led it up been around a like long that. time. Yeah, yeah, definitely, John. <laughs> yeah, is it um, got that also? I saw I them open to... for King Diamond. What's that? Um, Uncle Acid and the Deadbeats too, right? Yes. Yeah, that was good. Also, yeah, I saw them at like oh, with the King Diamond and uh, uh, yeah, Idle Hands. King Diamond are yeah. now onto others. Uh, Idle Hands, another band that I'm very passionate about. That uh, uh -huh. onto others now. It opened that up, but that's a whole nother subject for another show because we're going to be talking about <laughs> a couple of guys are show yeah. me back tomorrow night because we're going to be talking about merciful eight. Oh man solid yeah, so so cool i guess uh john are you finished and we'll I'm move done. on yeah all okay. right john thank you for joining us tonight and uh be sure to hang out and we'll chat a little bit after it's ruby's turn again <laughs> we're back finally sorry no yeah. it's all good it's all good um okay so for Infest Testimon, I, I have to say, like my number one favorite ghost song, Year Zero, it makes me want yes! to light some pillar candles and summon a demon. It's yes, so exactly. I get so good. it. I love it. It's like my number one favorite one. I feel like 80% so more metal when I listen to it. It's awesome. Um, <laughs> and for my second one on that album, I picked Monstrance Club. Mm -hmm. Love that song. <laughs> Love the message. If you know, you know. I want more. That's it. Um, <laughs> inappropriate. And I feel like I'm like I um 
for similar reasons on like the first album I like Ritual but I also like that it's got like and it's kind of like it doesn't sound like a scary nasty but the the lyrics are intense it is a nice juxtaposition so I picked that one and I also picked um Genesis because I love a good instrumental and I liked it it sounded kind of like proggy to me so yeah definitely yeah those were my four picks excellent yeah Uh, nice. Yeah. Oh, it's my turn. <laughs> Let me try to yeah. from infestissimo. <laughs> Every <laughs> time I go to say this album name, I say a bad word. I say it differently. Yeah. Yeah. Infestissimo. Infestissimo. Um, I actually really liked the title track just for the like the oh, Gregorian too. chant. Yeah. Yeah. The, like, the top, like, header song? Yeah. yeah it's really um, good. I don't know. I'm a sucker for, like, any quirky musical element. So the mm-hmm. Gregorian chanting and being yeah. incorporated into, like, mm-hmm. a modern song is really cool. Um, oh, yeah. And then going into that, somebody else mentioned um, in Secular Haze, the Calliope. And the, yeah. like, yeah. the three, mm-hmm. four waltz time, which should be, like, yeah. fun. But then I feel like yeah. I'm... Uh, I don't know, like a merry-go-round going straight to hell. Mm-hmm. I don't know. Yeah, absolutely. Just, that's, yeah. A, that's a very cool, um, I don't Same know. Service. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. yeah, and from uh, Opus Eponymous, um, I, I really like Satan Prayer. It's, yes. a, it's like, yes. a, like a laid back, like the drums are really fast, but then the vocals are very mellow. And I don't know. I don't really have anything else to yeah. say about that. Oh, and there's, is there like, um, isn't there an organ in that one at some point? I think so. There's an organ in a bunch of songs. Yeah. yeah. I can't remember what song has a, don't they use like a theremin on one song? Oh my God. I can't remember what song. There, I there is a theremin on this album. I agree. Yes, there is. Yeah. I, I, yeah. I can't remember Maybe. where they used it on, but I remember that. Oh, oh. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Oh, and obviously I really love Ritual. It's just a, yeah. Ritual. Yeah, like it's an evil, evil song. Yeah, oh, and when they do evil. the Our Father prayer in the yeah. like in the bridge. Yeah. yeah. I'm sorry, Neil. Um <laughs> Jack. Oh, for me, right? Okay. Um I also <laughs> had a note, like a side note about the the t- the title track because I really liked it. I think that they do a really good job with their like they always have like an opening instrumental or mostly instrumental thing and it's usually really good but i think this one is exceptionally good and the chanting the is chanting awesome. yeah. it just ties up it's a really good way to like ease you into what the rest of the record is going to be it, yeah. but it's without like i don't know i loved it i agree with you it's great um and then off that album my picks were secular haze also for the like circus vibes yeah. It really stood out. I um, my number one pick from this song is also, or from this album is also Year Zero, and I had a really hard time picking a second song, not because they're all not good. Like that whole album is great, yes. but I felt like Year Zero was so it stuck out to me so much that it became really difficult to distinguish a second song from that that mm-hmm. I felt like was like stood out to me as much so um but secular haze really did because of that that like kind of waltzy circusy mm-hmm. like evil really clown. weird flow <laughs> yeah evil cloud evil cloud vibes. evil cloud vibes um but then year zero which i know like multiple people have mentioned i knew that was gonna happen that is awesome this is a great <laughs> song it is um, awesome yeah, it's just like it's so dramatic. Mm, mm-hmm. Like, which obviously Ghost has no problem being dramatic. So right. I like very theatrical, no. high key drama mm-hmm. band. But this this song, I feel like, is like peak Ghost yes, dramatic. Like it is the height of it, like, like embodies drama. Like, the whole aesthetic. Yeah. Of yeah, and the rhythm section in that song is like they're not doing anything fancy. There's nothing special about it. The drummer's not going crazy. But something about the whole rhythm section in that song, the bass and the drums, it's like really relentless. And it, I just feel like if they went any other direction with the rhythm section in that song, it would not have been as good. Mm-hmm. But so it all ties really together. And also um, the way he says Beals above yeah. in that yeah. song, it's like <laughs> haunts my dreams. Like it's, Beals above. Beals above. <laughs> like it's so like, 
just I know the, the whole like listing of the the devil names yeah, and everything yeah. is very impactful overall but like the way he says the well, like if you sing along too hard you're gonna accidentally summon something yeah yeah, like, yeah. Check something. yeah. the devil is coming to your yeah, house shut shut it. the lights <laughs> off and stare into a mirror and yeah. Yeah. Those- <laughs> candy man candy man candy man candy man <laughs> If you um, sing along too hard, you might summon something. I like that line. Yeah, yeah. If you get too hard, if you get too you into it, it yeah. um, something's coming in your home. <laughs> and then with Opus, it's a little weird because coming from, uh, like, most of you guys have, like, obviously been into ghosts for years, and, mm-hmm. and I didn't even, I think, know that they existed until after their most recent album right. came out. And so when I, I, I think it was shortly after um, prequel came out that I heard them the first time. And then I, so I'm sort of working backwards. And the first time I listened to Opus, I didn't like it. Hmm. But wow, I could see, I could see that actually. Now that I'm too. listening to it, now that I decided I went back and like dug deep, I can't figure out why. I don't know why I didn't like it, but I remember that I didn't like it. And it ended up being the one that I had the hardest time picking two songs from. <laughs> because I just I like when I went back I just loved every track of that album but the first yeah. run through I just for some reason I just it didn't hit me the way that their other albums did and then digging deeper into it it was like a whole different experience I so because I also kind of worked my way back yeah from like the latest one but the one right before that yeah was the one I heard first and then I had to like okay well let me see what else is yeah yeah and so yeah yeah Yeah, and when i was binge listening to them i did the same thing i went the albums in reverse order and then you see like the transition the musical style like in reverse and have to heal different experience where you get to it again yeah 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 Yeah, it's a different experience working backward and not not following the band from the beginning Mm -hmm. usually when someone recommends a band to me i try to listen to their first album first Mm -hmm. and i intentionally try to do that but um, I think the way I, I kind of got into ghosts and bits and pieces from people playing songs right. for mm-hmm. me and like mm-hmm. slowly. So I had to work backwards. And yeah, this ended up being the hardest one for me to like choose okay. a song. I mean, I have like extraneous excess notes about it. Um, <laughs> I really love <laughs> Satan's Prayer. I live really love Prime more. I really, really love Genesis, the mm-hmm. instrumental one. Mm-hmm. Loved it. Genesis, but the yeah. ones I ended mm-hmm. up picking were um con clavi con dio yeah i think i said that right um because i really just like that the 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 really driving rhythm in it the bass intro is really nice and and just the the timing of when the vocals come in uh i think is i I, it's just it's really on point it's like a the, the timing of that song is excellent and um and then that yeah the the driving rhythm of it is like a little anxiety inducing yeah. in, a um, in a good way in a good way in like a way that you want you want it to be so but mm-hmm. yeah it's a movie it's a psycho it's yeah it's, it's a like, psycho it's a song. Song. Yeah, and yeah. it is it's like the yeah. second it's like, like when you were you were playing ghost in the car to get yourself hyped up before you got something fierce <laughs> <laughs> But uh, it's a great, it's a great track. Um, and it is, it's like the, is it the second? I think it's the second song on the album, like right after it the is. intro. Mm. Yeah. yeah it so is. it's a yeah. really good, like beginners to just like, it's like really nice. pushes you into what that album is going to be. And then my second pick was Ritual. And I, yeah. like, I know a lot of other people pick that, but I picked it because I feel like it's a song that shouldn't make any sense. And yet it, it works. Does. It does. It works. It works. The elements separately don't seem like they should make any sense Mm -hmm. together there's like you have like just this like the very beginning is like this very sort of light it's not too beautiful yeah it's too beautiful and then suddenly it like moves into a completely the tone the whole tone just Mm -hmm. drops and you have like this chuggy bass and then halfway through you have like these lighter vocals and halfway through there's just this like heavy deep breakdown out of nowhere right where he's just like growling and then it comes all the way back up and I my notes literally say this song is all over the place but it still works (laughs) it still works (laughs) and so those those are my picks that's it I feel like I talked a lot sorry (laughs) no I'm I'm glad you put in a lot of input Uh, you guys did some work on not just picking a song like sometimes maybe I even do (laughs) I'm not gonna explain why but you guys explain why you like them I like that a lot and thanks for coming on tonight and uh 
and really is on any other questions. Uh, I'm going to have you come <laughs> back for another one. We're going to. I have no out. answers, so it will be. We're going to find out some of your favorite bands and stuff of genres that you guys like. We'll have you on another episode. We were kind of talking about one earlier today, and we'll talk about that later. But thank yeah, you I guys. Ava, right? <laughs> yeah, Ava. We're going to do Ava. We're doing Ava show. I yeah, can do Ava. <laughs> Rich, you down for an Ava show with us? Uh, possibly. I actually do like some Ava. All right, cool. All right, we're back over to Mr. Chuck. And Hi. welcome back to the show. <clears throat> Thank you. Okay, so from Infest, I'm just going to call it that because yeah. I've murdered it every time. Fair. It's better I'm gonna, than what we came up with. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to go first off with Secular Haze because, I mean, besides from the fact of what everybody else said about it, it being like a dark, weird carnival song, hearing that song first coming from the first album was really different and really really unique sounding and it was just really cool and what was really awesome was, was that up a week prior to the release of that song because that was their lead single they had like a mysterious website up I don't know if anybody else caught this and every day they added a candle and you could wow. click on the oh candle God. and it would That's be good. like the bass hmm. track or the guitar and they just like oh, pieced clever. it together throughout the entire that. week where you click on all the candles and it would be like all the different tracks and then at the end of the release the whole song it was just really cool and really original that they did that you know so i've always mm -hmm. just loved that song and then my second pick for that album would be um depth of satan's eyes just because that song is totally heavy totally rocking and the closest thing to opus on this album i mean I, I like the whole album i like all the songs but right. those are the two that like are probably like the ones that i would pick as my favorites so then moving on to opus i'm gonna go satan prayer i know that seems to have been like a popular one too but the bass line in that song it for the first half well for the whole song but for the first half it drives the song and it's really really cool the way it just like bops around and then the keyboard parts are like really like strange and like trippy sounding. And then the tempo in that song just keeps going up and down, up and down, up and down. And then when you get to the final, the chorus part, for the longest time, I didn't even know what he was saying. I thought it was like Latin or something. And then one day I sat down with the, <laughs> with the lyric sheet and I was like, oh, Satan prayer. He is saying it in the song. <laughs> and it, was just, it just always hit me strange the way that I like, heard it you know so but and uh oh and then of course prime mover just because seeing them yeah see, see, seeing them at roseland standing in front of papa one and they played that song it was so heavy because they nice. like their first album lacked in production so when you saw it live it was so much more which I think is actually better because a lot of times you go and see a band and they sound weak because their album is so polished, you know, but yeah. they had that like, you know, opposite going on that their album wasn't very polished. So live, it just sounded so big and so huge. So I was most like blown away with that. So that, that's it for me. <laughs> their live experience is you. awesome. Yeah. Uh, I guess we're back to Todd. Todd, welcome back. Hey, I'm back. <laughs> so I just wanted to clarify, we were uh, talking oh, yeah, on, right. on the marionette before. Yeah. Actually, uh, track two from, you know, the AAP. Ghosts. If you have ghosts, yeah. Which has this awesome Nosferatu. Nosferatu, yeah, I love that. Fan. I know you. some of you other guys, you're like big horror fans. Maybe everyone is here. Horror yeah, yeah. goes together, right? But. Yep. Uh, you know, so that's why I'm wearing this shirt here because yeah, one of my favorite designs. So the very first time I saw Ghost, um, I got this hoodie. Sometimes their hoodies are like the coolest design, you know. But yeah, that is sick. Yeah, yeah. Cool. that's yeah. awesome. Yeah, that's cool. Anyway, so that was 2014 at Best Buy Theater, and it was during this whole period, like the Infestissimum. If you have Ghost, you know, like that. If you have Ghost, I can't believe like what a huge song that became uh, in yeah, their- Great song. In their, you know, their, their live show. Uh, they play it all the time. Um, but, you know, 
so I, I too am a fan of I'm a Marionette, but if I had to pick something from, you know, the, the album proper, Infestissimum, uh, man, it's hard. Cause like there's so yeah. many good songs, but uh, Goulet, uh, Zombie Queen. Yeah. I just mm-hmm. love that, the whole, you know, horror surf theme. <laughs> like <happened. laughs> Yeah. Uh, he's singing about, you know, bones coming out of the dirt and mm. like surfing, like, you know, surfing safari. It's great. <laughs> um, Evil Beach Boys. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's the ghost vibe in general. <laughs> right. Zombie yeah. Beach. So there's that. And then, you know, of course, all the radio hits like Secular Haze, Your Zero. Um, I mean, it's, it's just loaded. Monstrance Clock, right? That's a perennial. Yeah. Uh, set closer. I don't think there's a bad song on that album. Oh, no. That yeah, gets perfect. That. Like opening notes to the closing. It's awesome. It's all great. It's all great. So, um, you know, if I had to just pick one, I, I really like Idolatry uh, because it's uh, the way it pokes fun at, you know, organized religion. Yeah, religion. I just think, you know, it was, it's, it's very cleverly done, you know, like as is mentioned here right. earlier. There's a lot of black metal bands that go for like that, you know, ah, and I love that, but um, it, it's like they attract more flies with honey than they do with yeah. internet, you know, kind of thing. That's, that's how Ghost strikes me because they have the imagery and people are like, oh, we know what these guys are about. And then they listen to them and you're like, ah, oh, that was, you know, that wasn't as hard smashing as I thought it was going to be, but mm-hmm. really, gotcha. it's so catchy. It's really catchy. Mm-hmm. Um, so then, uh, moving on to Opus Eponymous, is that castle, is that castle mayhem or is it more Scooby-Doo? It- it- <laughs> 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 Scooby-Doo. Uh, be a bit <laughs> right? I'm gonna, I'm gonna go with Scooby-Doo in case Attila's watching. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Now, you know, right, mayhem's from Norway and, uh, you know, <laughs> Sweden, so. Chances are it's a different church, but who knows? Um, no, no, but I was saying the vibe was like they were going like black metal from, and uh, from yeah. the horror, from the movie too. You're great, yeah, yeah, definitely. Totally agree. Totally agree. Uh, Elizabeth, one of my all-time favorite songs, probably my favorite song. I'll go. I'll go. I'll just go for it and say that is my favorite mm-hmm. ghost song, Elizabeth. Um, I don't even think they ever did a video for it. Like there's a fan video. No, I don't think so. There's a fan video for it on YouTube that. Uh, that is really awesome. <clears throat> There's no videos off the first album. Yeah, yeah no, there really nothing, just fan made stuff. Um, and then Prime Mover would be uh, my other favorite, just like my bandmate said. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I mean, it's so heavy and just, you know, filled with atmosphere. Just like the whole, that whole first album. Uh, really great stuff. And uh, I'm just happy to see, you know, Papa Four make his debut. You know, enough with Cardinal Copia. Like that whole yeah. thing was like, ah, okay, we're in goofball territory. It's like, <laughs> it's like, it's like Dead Alive 3, you know? It's like, <laughs> you know, I don't know. Evil, Evil uh, Dead 1 was, was like straight horror. Evil Dead 2 was like horror comedy. Evil yeah, Dead yeah. 2 great comedy. Well, they went for their more commercial, more poppy, uh, more poppy album. And, so, and they started playing arenas, like you said, catching more flies with... Yeah. The vinegar there, you know? Yeah. Now so, maybe they're going to try to go back to a little more of the menacing <clears throat> who knows what comes with the next version. Yeah, I hope I so. Hope so. Yeah, yeah, it's supposed too. to be heavier. I've read that. It's supposed to be a heavier album. Yeah. yeah. I guess, uh, Todd, if you're finished, we'll move back over to Rich. And Rich, I like that you have a black light poster behind you, too. It's actually, my black Sabbath poster is right behind me, also. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I, got a couple, I got a couple. I got an Iron Maiden number of the Beast. I got the four Kiss Faces. Yeah. yeah, I still got to get that uh, Grim uh, Grim Reaper, Sea Wind Hell one. I got to find. I got to find that. I have that. I have that too. That's cool. Good luck finding it right now. I, have I know. It. I know. <laughs> I'm gonna take. I'm gonna pull out my ABBA Blacklight poster. <laughs> <laughs> someone, so must next... the, someone must have the Ghost Blacklight poster in this room, don't they? They have one. Uh-huh. Yeah, they did have one. They made one, right? You would, think you so. would know. Oh yeah, they, I, thought <laughs> you guys, I thought you guys would say, "Yeah, I got it in this box set." I, I, they had the one <laughs> if anybody was gonna have it, it was posters. I don't know if I have a black exactly. 
<laughs> they did do a black light one. I've seen it around. It was very limited, I think. But anyhow. I have a Watain one. I have the Watain black yes. light too. I wish I would have bought four or five that night because you don't see that anywhere ever. Mm. Yeah. Anyhow, back to Rich. Sorry. That's <laughs> all right. So uh, for Infest, I'm picking the same two that everybody's been picking. I guess we should do like a, a pick a greatest hits for these guys because we would pick all the <laughs> all have the same choices. So I'm going to go with a Year Zero and a Secular Haze for all the same reasons you guys said. I don't know what else yeah. I can say about it. But I will say about the album, though, when I heard it after listening to the debut, it was so different for me listening to it because it's not the same. The first one's very you know, minimalistic, I would say, you know, yeah. straight, mm -hmm. straightforward. And then this one has much more, you know, layers to it and dimension to it. And yeah, kind of seven, kind of seventies influence, a little hippie ish at times, you know, it's got the, you can tell their keyboard. budget went up. <laughs> it's sure. what? Yeah. I said, you can tell their budget went up. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Yeah. <laughs> it's a different, you can tell the four albums are different from each other. So it yeah. took me a little while to get used to this album, actually, after hearing the, the straightforward delivery of the first one. But I enjoy it. It's great. It's a very interesting, creative album. A lot of layers to it. Um, and then from the debut, I actually remember reviewing that when it first came out in 2010. Because, okay. And like you guys said, nobody knew who they were. I never heard of them. They just came out of like nowhere. And when I saw the logo and the artwork, I thought they were going to be like your standard black metal band. Very extreme, the evil vocals, the really aggressive riffing and everything. And it was the complete opposite, even though their logo reflects, you know, that type of music. Yeah. So they really, they got the, a great formula on that first album, you know, out straight out the door. It's melodic, but it's got the metal riffs and it's got the imagery. So, yeah, it was great. Um, and I love the album art too. So I picked from that one another two that everybody's been picking, Ritual, which is very catchy, great hook, and Satan Prayer. Okay. Another two, I guess, that should be showing up on their greatest hits, right? <laughs> hey, if, uh, if you're watching Ghost, we'll, we'll help you pick out your greatest we're, hits. Yeah, we're picking, them, we're picking them right now. <laughs> yeah, we're picking them for you. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, yeah. I, I, like I said, I, I remember reviewing that when it first came out. Never heard of them. Nobody never heard of them. Was before they were big, they were just doing yeah. They were doing little clubs at the time when the album came out. Yeah, we were saying that Marlin Room at the Webster Hall was their first gig mm -hmm. around in the New York area. Yep, yep. Yeah, and all of a sudden by the second album they started getting huge. Second album, yeah, starting getting started bigger, to... and then all of a sudden they're doing arenas. I think the third one, Maiden, the third then... one went platinum. Mel yours when they started doing the arenas. Yeah, yeah. the third one went platinum. And then, you know, getting on the ghost tour and then actually, then you're going, wait a minute, they just opened up for Maiden and yeah. now all of a sudden you're, they're headlining. I was like, wow, you know? Yeah. But that first album, it, it always reminded me of when I first heard it, I thought of Merciful Fate, Melissa, a Candle mm -hmm. Mass album and Blue Oyster Cult. It's a little bit of oh, a man, that. I echo yeah. that Blue Oyster Cult and I've been waiting to talk about that all night. That, to me, yeah. It, to me, they remind me, oh, their music style reminds me more of a, of a 70s Blue Oyster Cult than it does yeah. much for me, because it's more of that. Yeah, I, I, can hear the, I can hear the hooks, the catchiness of like uh, Into the Coven and By the Sound of the Demon Bell, a couple true, of those songs, or, or, or Gypsy, you know, from Don't Break the Oath. Yeah. You know, a couple of those songs, I could definitely hear the, the hookiness and the catchiness of that in Ghost on Excellent. the first album. Is it but just me, one, or when I hear of a like a song that's a single word title and it's a female's name, like Melissa, Abigail, El Elizabeth, it just mm. creeps me the fuck out. Like I get the <laughs> chills when I, yeah, I don't know what it is about it, but it's just something very sinister that you know that's it's innocuous. From the seventies, it's from the seventies. But it's really, and stuff yeah, like that. exactly. Yeah. It's so, <laughs> so creepy. Oh, a stalker wrote that song. That's it was it was her it was her dirty pillows. Ah. <laughs> cool. Anyway, sorry, Rich, but uh, that's that, right. yeah, I, I just I think I, I I summed it up there. All right, and saying. we'll round up the show tonight with Johnny, and then we'll go back to me, and we'll uh, be rounding things up for tonight. And thank everybody for joining tonight. Johnny, you're back with your final. 
closing statements of all right oh. now the the first two albums i don't know when i go back to them i just think of good memories once again like yeah, yeah they had such mystique to them and they had such that aura to them and uh yeah it really really made you just want to go and see them over and over again just the energy was really something mystique honorable mentions uh, the Rocky Erickson, if you have ghosts, I, I love it. I love that song. I can't get enough. I play it all the time. Um, uh -huh. Monstrous Clock, another one. Once again, when you see them live, all together, all together yeah. as together one, as one. Being together. Great, great energy. Once again, you just you love it. You know, I can't get can't get enough of it. Ritual is another one, but uh, I went for my picks. The big two. I love Body and Blood. I love that yeah. song once again. Oh, the nice. catchiness. I don't know what it is, but I just think maybe I'm such a Sabbath head. But the simple riffs just remind me of Sabbath. You know, I don't know anything yeah, simple. Yeah. I kind of give credit to Tony. You know, but yeah, meets Blue Oyster Cult meets you know kind of a low edge King Diamond. But yeah, I always I always think I love the simple riffs. So Body and Blood and uh, Goulet Zombie Queen. You'll, oh, hear yeah. that, you'll hear that coming from my beach spot every summer. I love the surfing spot. <laughs> and wait a minute, they sing, they 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 sing about the black guitar. lights too. Black lights. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh yeah, hell yeah. Yep. So yeah, those are my big two from the second album. The first album I went with Eliza Beth because uh, you know it always goes back to the energy, the sing along of it. I just think of everybody <laughs> singing along with Eliza Beth and uh, Death Knell was my other pick. Oh, great, great that's heavy, a good, heavy that's song. That's a great yeah. song, yeah. Yeah, you know, because everybody says, are they metal, are they not metal? But I mean, every album has a very metal song. Hey, Sabbath was a hard rock blues band. You know, Sabbath wasn't metal. You know, they invented metal. So I don't know. Not to say that, you know, Ghost is metal, but they're definitely, you know, they got some <laughs> metal elements to them at times. You know? They're oh, in yeah. the neighborhood. I, I think they're definitely yeah. 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 adjacent. <laughs> Yeah. 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 Once again, as they progressed, you know, that's that's a that's a debate. Nonetheless, they are metal. Ghost definitely has metal. metal. Do it all the way. And Death Knell is a fine ex example of that. And yeah. Uh, yeah, those are my big two from the first album: Death Knell and Eliza Beth. And uh, yeah, I, I I love Ghost. Once again, I look forward to seeing them and uh, the new yeah. the new album coming. Hopefully, it is going to be a heavier, darker <laughs> album. And mm -hmm. uh, yeah, that's it. Excellent. Thanks for uh, joining us tonight. And uh, your first time on the Rock Fantasy Files. I've been trying so many times he, for the Ozzy episode and the Black I know. Episode. I know. Well, I'm going to be back for he some. He those nights off when he got scheduled to work. But thankfully, we got you back on and we'll get you on some more episodes coming down the road. Uh, yeah, thank you for having me. For 2013 in the Festium, I don't. I probably I said it way wrong, but uh, what, between all of us tonight, <laughs> yeah. we said it correctly. Maybe. Someone is right. Uh, <laughs> it's John, I think John had it nailed on. But. I didn't even bother mentioning yeah. the album. I just hit first, second, third, and fourth. <laughs> it's easier that way. It's easier. <laughs> All right, uh, on that album from 2013, I'm going to cheat like hell. I couldn't guess right one. I got, I, I'm going with a song <laughs> no, one, no one mentioned tonight. It's Per Aspera and Inferi. Uh. No. Yeah, because nobody wanted to say the title. title. Nobody yeah. wanted to say that. <laughs> yeah, screw and, that. Uh, of course, we all mentioned Year Zero. Idola Train, uh, who taught uh, I echo that one. I love that song. Idola Train for the Imbeciles. Uh, that song's so catchy. And it's such a crazy message. And it's just like against organized religion, of course. Of course, the classic Monstrous Clock, which they end most their shows with. I watched a video from Hellfest uh, earlier today, which I've watched before from, I think, 2016, where they actually yeah. and they have all the nuns out and they're giving out uh, oh, I love that. stuff. It's great. Over the top. And, of course, Zombie Queen with Goulet. Goulet, Zombie Queen, the black light and everything and that. I love that. Black um, light guide you. Hey, you know what? When we're done here, we can do a sing-along if you like. Hey. <laughs> I wasn't don't th think. I don't think threaten me with a good time. <laughs> <laughs> We're going back to the initial album. Uh, I'm going with Ritual. Nice. Uh, Elizabeth, Elizabeth, uh, of course, Bathory. They're talking about Bathory, of course, and it's great. And uh, Stand By Him. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. I, that. I think that was one of their strong songs from that. And I love the instrumental outro of Genesis. Someone, I think Rose might have mentioned that. And Mandy, or a Ruby. A lot of the girls said I know. And uh, 
I remember working in my shop when that came out. We played it, played the, you played, I think we wore the vinyl out on that album when it came out. And uh, me and Steve Levin, it was a work for me for years as a regular on the channel too. We used to call it the chip song. If you remember the old 70s chip, yeah. uh, like the, it was kind of yeah. like had that weird, like, like, I think John was talking about, they have a lot of 70s vibes. Oh, yeah, like, absolutely. Kind of covers and the, like some of the, like, it's very, like, that kind of music. And you guys love it. And uh, I think we've had a really fun episode tonight. I want to thank everyone mm -hmm. for giving their time to the channel tonight and uh Thanks, hopefully sir. we can have some of these newcomers back and uh i loved having you on uh cinema slaughter what's going on in your world anything you'd like to plug before we run off tonight because uh sure. you're, you're new to the channel and uh, introduce yourself and let us know what Thanks, you guys man. well like you said earlier i've been a, a, a super fan of rock fantasy i moved upstate in 86 and okay. so I was like, where am I going to get my records? And some kid was like, I, I just met him. And he's like, oh, there's a place in Middletown, Rock Fantasy. I was like, let's go. And you were closed. But I was like, let's just go see the store. Like, I needed to know where my, oh, I was okay. going to get my records. Um, but I've been a fan, you know, since then. And it's so cool because there would be times where I hadn't seen Steve for like a year or two. And I'd be in, in Manhattan trying to catch a show and yeah. I just turn around and fucking Steve is there. And I'm like, Steve! <laughs> and, Steve and that is would, everywhere. Steve is everywhere. A lot, of, a lot of people have that story to tell. Yeah. <laughs> and it's so funny. You, yeah. I'd always see you eating at Duke's. Cause I mean, we all had exactly. our game. Like if we go into certain venues, we knew we were going to go to a certain restaurant or a certain, you know, pub. Yeah, man. Yeah. so dukes was definitely one of those places yeah, that we, we, we would see each other but uh anyway um i'm a besides a huge metal fan and record collector and you know just uh all the other stuff that i collect i also have a podcast it's called cinema slaughter and you can get it anywhere it's on spotify it's on uh itunes uh, you know google play i think we have it on iheart radio and we talk about music uh, you know horror movie soundtracks we talk about horror and sci-fi um and how it affects culture and how people come to horror um you know people have different like um gateway drugs into horror movies and how they first got started so we talked to people about that we've interviewed a bunch of people on stuff like that chris allo that you're friends with actually i met chris years ago at his hudson horror show and i became yeah. a huge follower of the hudson horror show and chris allo is you know a friend as well so um yeah i was uh been thinking about trying to be on this and i was like how am i going to just ask steve to be on one of no, his episodes? I, mean, I'm, I'm, I wish we would have done it sooner yeah me too and i'm glad you did so it was really a pleasure meeting everyone tonight and steve i really look forward to joining in again and then it's you know it's always a pleasure and just wish you a ton of success and i know you've been dealing with crazy stuff with this pandemic but i'm happy that you're still oh in we business. all are man we all yeah. are and in fact chris allo is not on this episode tonight he's battling covid and i mean he's getting better oh, but he's still got some symptoms from it and uh oh man and that's the reason that dennis barth isn't on tonight too because he lost someone in the family tonight too but, you know yeah. it's just a tough time and luckily we're all able to talk about and promote something that we're passionate about while we're on this downtime now, it's the only one of the bright spots of it, I think. Uh, yeah, yeah. John, and uh, I guess, John, what do you got going on with you? You'd like to say anything about your uh, YouTube channel or your Facebook page and everything? Sure, yeah. I have a YouTube channel called Layer of the Alchemist. We cover all things heavy metal and hard <clears> rock. <throat> uh, I'm coming up on my one year anniversary and I just broke the 1000 subscriber mark. So I have some special things I'm gonna be working on for that. <laughs> Thank Excellent. you. Uh, I also awesome. have a I also have a Black Sabbath podcast. It's available on all the streaming networks. It's called nice. Into the Void, a Black Sabbath podcast, where we just sort of go album by album. Our last episode, we just did Technical Ecstasy. So awesome. uh, we're moving Man, our way cool. through the album. So if you uh, anybody wants to check that out, they can. And uh, thank you for having me on the show. It was, it was really a we blast. will have you back again soon. Uh, thank you. Chuck uh, and Todd, you guys got Dissolve going. Chuck also has another band. Uh, and maybe you want to just talk a little bit about them quickly. And Sure. Well, first off, with Dissolve, we put out an album last year. We weren't able to uh, promote it or anything, but it's called 
until the drugs wear off and you can <laughs> you can get it through uh Masuba Records uh m a i t s u b a dot com records if you want to order that and Excellent. my other yeah, there it is right there there it is woohoo yes. there it is so, and one of my, my other on the cover and <clears throat> my other band is called Mama Doom and we just signed a deal with a European label called Majestic Mountain Records. Nice. Uh, it's a really cool label. They got a lot of awesome bands. Definitely worth checking out. And our album should be coming out sometime like June, July. We're still waiting on the exact date. And hopefully within the next month or so, we'll be able to put out our first single and we have a video to, uh, to go along with that too. And it's the video, came, the video came out great as for our song, Oh Lucifer. And it's like a three and a half minute horror movie. It's awesome. Nice. So I can't look, wait. Yeah. So mama doom, just, uh, keep your ears open for it and check it out if you want. So excellent. Excellent. That's great. that. Thank you. Hey oh, Steve, you, you should you should put their band links and videos in uh, in the D box once this video goes live. I can do that. Um, for so you, you could prom promote their yeah, yeah, prom promote their usually, stuff. Yeah. I do yeah. that usually to everyone that's on the show. Yeah, yeah. Cool. Okay. Can I just uh, say, Steve, that uh, the reach of Ghost is uh, multi generational. It yeah. goes to the children. Uh, I I can't tell you how many kids I've seen like dressed up as Papa. <clears throat> Like worshiping yeah. worshiping satan worshiping I mean, yeah. Satan, yeah. You know? yeah yeah uh, my, well, own, my own daughter drew this she's like oh you're gonna meet ghosts when <laughs> <laughs> oh that's awesome that's awesome hey, they are very similar to kiss in that regard i mean i remember being a little kid and yeah. like me and all my siblings dressed up as members of kiss oh so totally like seven yeah, for halloween that yeah. was like the like, that was like the original cosplay of yeah yeah it's like the same kind of energy I, they give off we're like yeah are into i can it. remember seeing them at the palace theater in albany and they were playing like which image or something and i looked over and it was a very, in, in, a very young crowd in the audience i mean there's some older people like you know todd was, i was echo, echoing what todd was saying but i saw this like two kids they probably were like 16 and they were like holding each other and smiling and i'm like, oh. <laughs> like you guys, they were so in love with the music and I just, I, that just stood out with me yeah yep. they fell in love at a ghost show how romantic yeah, yeah. Uh, they'll tell their story to their kids someday about how they met at a ghost show and fell yeah. in love yeah. was <laughs> anybody was about the birds and the bees when you see them live he likes to talk about it all the time yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> rich was any going on over at metal asylum um interviews we do our facebook interviews you know we still do that once yeah, a week yeah, or once okay. every other uh once a week or one every other week yeah um and we, i also do writing for the website and then brave words magazine i always contribute there yeah um do some things for the metal hall of fame once in a while mm -hmm. they got stuff going on um yeah and once in a while i join here and uh see a tranquility too that i'm on once in a while too yeah nice. we're all keeping it keeping the flame alive here rich that's great yeah and, uh, yep yeah thanks for having I, me on I'm, you know, happy to rich you for anyone who doesn't know brave words man i mean it's such an iconic um place oh, yeah, to yeah. Like, catch metal and listen oh, to yeah, such yeah. Cool. yeah so yeah. thanks a lot man great magazine. Been, i've been i've been a fan for a long time so it's great mm -hmm. yeah it's a great magazine they've been out there since the 90s when they actually used to have an actual magazine you could buy them yeah, yeah, exactly yeah yep yeah so yep, yeah, they're still flying the flag for metal. Nice, awesome. nice. All right, I guess we can wrap things up. And Rose, Kiki, and Ruby, if you come to Rock Fantasy, you can definitely uh, see them there. Mm -hmm. And they're there seven days a week. Not all of them every day. But yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they cover, yeah. we're seven days a week. But one of us will be there for sure. If you want to talk metal, and if you live in Middletown, New York, and you like go to Red Lobster, you'll see Johnny Mop over there. That's where he works, and he's at the bar, and he's uh, great bartender and 
Thank you, brother. Thank you for Rock Fantasy. Everybody go to Rock Fantasy. It is the destination location. Everybody go there. And we mingle Rock about rock and roll and heavy metal and keep the community and, alive. Absolutely. And Thank you, Steve. Most importantly, it. buy stuff. If you go there, buy something. <laughs> well, yeah. Do yeah. buy things. It helps. Yeah. We need jobs. Yeah. Yeah. So buy things. Yeah, buy some stuff. Buy some pipes, buy some records, buy some pinball. Absolutely. Have a great time. And uh, we've got some interesting shows coming up on the channel. We just interviewed uh, someone from Artillery, which went up on the, just going up on the channel tomorrow and uh, in talking about their new album, X, that's coming out on Metal Blade Records. Tomorrow, we are doing a panel like tonight on Merciful Fate. On Thursday, I will have the pleasure of talking with Hans von Dahl, the drummer from Sabaton. We're going to see what's going on in the Sabaton camp. That's and awesome. on, on Saturday afternoon, we have a doubleheader, and a couple of the guys in this show will be back for that. We have a, we're going to a panel on Immortal, and our very special oh. guest today is oh. Mia Winter Wallace from Abbott. Oh, cool. Time uh, for Death, and uh, the True Endless is going to be our main guest, and uh, I've fallen in love with Nervosa and all the girls in that band are super and been a, and Prika, been a great help to the channel. And then later in that afternoon, if you're Black Sabbath fans, we're going to have Tony Dolan from Venom Inc., Demolition Man, and his new project called Sabaton Arrow. We're going to do a show with him and we're going to have a bunch of guests on that. And uh, it's like an all star Black Sabbath tribute. He's got. Uh, Never heard of them. <laughs> yeah, he's going to have a bunch of guests coming on, and there's a giant a bunch of musicians. And I believe it goes to some type of charity. So those are things coming up on the channel. So please take a moment. Awesome. Uh, awesome. Subscribe. Yeah. Mention yeah. your favorite ghost songs in the episode tonight. And uh, hit like and do all that good stuff and uh, support all the bands and all the, all the people on the channel, please. Thank Thanks, you guys. all for tonight. Thank, Thank you. Thanks, Steve. Thanks, Steve. Thanks, Steve.